Hello everybody, I'm Christine and I wanna to talk to you guys today about what you do when you're afraid you're not gonna finish your curriculum for the year. So I realize we're barely into November, but a lot of people have a goal of getting so much done by their Christmas break. And so we're kind of getting close to that now. I know I'm starting my Christmas shopping already and finding stocking stuffers, thinking of all of our holiday activities. So this is when people start to go, oh no, we're not gonna finish XYZ before our Christmas break. What are we going to do? So I have three tips for you guys so that you don't freak out about not being able to finish your curriculum. So the first one is so important. You have to not let your curriculum rule your homeschool. So what I mean by that is you have your set curriculum, right? And some of it even has it laid out where you need to do this on this day and this is the week you're on and then you start to worry because you're like, not only are we not on, so today's Thursday, not only are we not on day four for this week, we're not even on this week. How are we ever going to catch up? What are we going to do? It is okay. So even if you're in a state that requires you to do certain subjects, requires you to have certain amount of hours of this or that, or turn in a portfolio or any of that, you still do not need to be a slave to your curriculum. You can still pick and choose what you want to use with it. You can pick and choose what you want to add to it, what you want to take away from it. If you want to use just bits and pieces of it so that you can basically use it as a foundation. So let's say history. Let's say you're doing ancient history, but you are totally falling in love with learning about Egypt as opposed to anything else in ancient history. It's okay to take longer on Egypt and not just skip ahead because that's what your curriculum says to do. You are allowed to pick and choose what you want to do, what you don't want to do, what you want to spend more time on and what you want to spend less time on or even just cut out altogether because all of those little tidbits are going to add up to fill that portfolio or to meet whatever requirements are met of you. So the second thing that you can do to help is do year round homeschooling. Oh my goodness. So we have recently just switched to doing year round homeschooling and it has relieved so much stress in our lives. We already, I think are almost to what is required in our, well, what's recommended because we don't have a day requirement in our state. We do recommendations. We're nearly to that already. And I'll talk a little bit more about why in just a second, but it's not because we've been sitting here doing all of this book work. It's because of the way that I followed number one of not having the curriculum completely rule or homeschool, but because we're able to have that fun and it starts in June or whatever date I want to choose from and have all of those days count. Guys, I count weekend camping trips. I count going um, to visiting family in other states and going to the zoo or going to a museum or whatever. Those count as school days, okay? So... That brings me to point number three is make the fun things count because they do. They are educational. If your child was in a brick and mortar school and they took a field trip to the zoo, that would count as a school day, right? We wouldn't be saying, oh no, it's field trip day, so it doesn't count. Those absolutely count towards your school days. So if you are having park day with your friends or if you are visiting the aquarium or the zoo or you are taking a hike or you are taking a camping trip or whatever it is, those count as school days. Mark them on your attendance sheet as a school day. We are required to keep attendance in my state. A lot of states are not required to, but I feel like most of them do want you to have that. Have those days marked off on your attendance sheet. They count as school. So same thing with if you're watching a documentary, that counts as school. If your kids are doing a craft, that counts as school. All of this stuff counts as school and it should be marked as so. Throw that thing in your portfolio. Even if it's something that it is like watching a documentary, just write down what you watched, the how long it is maybe, especially if your kiddos in like middle school or high school, you're going to want more of a time for how long they were watching it um, because you're going to have more of those hours to get those credits and whatnot. 
mark that stuff down, throw in a portfolio, put it on your, in your planner, whatever it is that you do to keep track. If you need to keep track of that stuff, put it in there for those fun activities. We absolutely make sure that we have room in our schedule for all of this. Today, my kids made an amazing eagle's nest outside and my oldest son was sawing wood and they spent like an hour outside making this nest to go with our rabbit trail study we're doing right now that will be coming out hopefully in the next couple of weeks we're going to be doing our nest study. Um, but I purposely have these open-ended things because it's like this is part of learning for them. This is, I mean, it's really part of handicrafts, right? Making some type of nest because they had to figure out how to get it to, they actually made theirs in a tree. Guys, I can't keep my kids out of trees. They made theirs up in a tree, so they had to figure out how to get the stick so that it would stay up in the tree, but also hold a baby. They have a little stuffed animal eagle. It was perfect for this. So how to make sure that that baby is not going to fall out of that nest. So then you're getting some STEM learning and all of this. So all of that can go in your portfolio, in your planner, whatever it is that you do to say, yes, this is learning. So make sure that you aren't being a slave to your curriculum, that you are using it just as a tool in your toolbox. Move to uh, year-round homeschooling if you're able to. So even in states that require so many months of the year, or if they require you to have a typical school year schedule, you can still do school in the summer and count it towards your September, October, November school. I don't like to call it lying because it's not. It's part of what you guys did. It's the education your kids were getting. Mark it down even for those stricter states that you did that because that's to me silly that you can only do school September through May and not have anything to do in July and August. Put it on there. Your kids learned. They are getting that education. Um, and then third is to count the fun stuff. Yes, my kids did vocabulary with their science today. I also had them do some sketches and stuff like that in their nature journal. But then they built this amazing nest and they were getting all these other things a part of that. And it wasn't an hour of just playing. It was an hour of learning, an hour of using a saw safely, an hour of figuring out how to make sure this eagle, this eagle doesn't fall out of the nest and all of this stuff. So I hope that that helps you guys with not freaking out. Don't worry about what day of your uh, schedule that you're on, what week of your schedule that you're on, especially if you're spreading out that school year. That's what helps us. The one thing that I really stick to is our math and how much math they're finishing throughout the year. So if we're starting in June and we're ending in June, they have an entire 12 months to get through something that's meant to be done in nine months. So that really takes the pressure off and helps us so that, first of all, if we're not doing it four or five days a week, it's no big deal. And if we're having a bad week, it's no big deal. If they're needing to take more time to practice a concept, it's not a big deal at all. We can take that time without worrying about being behind. So I hope this has helped you guys with not freaking out about not finishing your curriculum during the year because I know that that can be really stressful for a lot of homeschool families. And I really hope that it's encouraging to you and that my tips are able to help you so you're able to move some stuff around in your own homeschools so that you're not stressed out. And so that you're able to enjoy the fun stuff that can go along with your homeschool. I will see you guys next week. I don't know what I'm talking about next week yet, but I'll make sure to get on and get live next week with some type of tips for you guys in your homeschooling journeys. I hope you guys have a really great rest of your week. Talk to you later.